So what will it take to break the logjam on the big issues that divide the country on guns? Will it take a new generation? maybe combat veterans who know all about guns and the damage they cause to get past the politics. So we got two members of Congress, both 38 years old, who have very different views on the gun control debate to sit together at my kitchen table. Virginia Republican Scott Taylor, a former Navy SEAL sniper who saw combat in Iraq and recovered from severe injuries sustained there. And Massachusetts Democrat Seth Moulton, a former Marine Corps captain and combat platoon leader who had four tours in Iraq. And I began by asking Congressman Moulton to make the case for why he thinks gun restrictions would decrease gun violence. Well, it's shown. They're shown to affect gun violence. I mean, there are pl plenty of studies that show that, that states that have tighter gun laws have less gun violence. And this is an American epidemic. It's really a public health crisis. I've seen the effects of gun violence firsthand in Iraq, and I know that it has no place in our schools, on our streets, at our concerts, and there are things that we can do to reduce it that are with, within the Second Amendment. You know, Scott and I swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, both as members of Congress and the same oath as a Navy SEAL and a United States Marine. So I don't want to do anything that violates the Constitution, but there are common sense things that we can do if Democrats and Republicans come together to reduce this violence in our communities. You feel entirely differently. Sure. And, and, and let me say, look, it's great to be with you. It's great to be with Seth as well, too. And look, you know, he's a, he, like most other folks that are in Congress, both Dems and Republicans, care very deeply about this country. They want to protect the Constitution. They want to protect their people. I understand that for sure. But at the same time, you know, when you, you have a situation that happened, which was tragic, traumatic, and everyone feels the same emotion, they do. But it's up to leaders like us to have to, to see clarity through the emotional chaos and to understand that it is a high, very high bar to be able to take some, some folks' rights away uh, to, to try to enact policies that may take their rights away but not really do anything. So when you look at gun violence in America and when you look at deaths, when you look at like 30-some thousand gun violence, the, the overwhelming majority of them are suicides. The overwhelming majority of them are use, use handguns, right? When you look at some of the populations that are more uh, predisposed, I guess, if you will, to gun violence. I mean, it's, so there's domestic disputes, there's young men in certain areas. When you do look at some of, the, some of the cities, when you look at the numbers of them, the vast majority of gun violence are in a few cities. And they all have tight restrictions on, on guns. You can't have a gun in DC, but there's still gun violence. I mean, look, that's as Justice Scalia has said, you can have restrictions under the Second Amendment, as we do with any amendment to the United States Constitution. It is up and to we us. Already, we already restrict, I mean, you want to protect your, your family's home. Sure. I mean, a great way to protect your family's home, as you know, as, you, as a Navy SEAL, would be to have some landmines out in front and have some gr grenades stockpiled. But we don't allow that in our of community. Course. We don't allow those weapons of war here. We don't allow families to own tanks. So we have reasonable restrictions that are perfectly respectful of the Second Amendment. And we know from experience that restrictions like this, uh, that, that common sense reforms will help. I would love to comment because you hear reasonable, you hear common sense. Those are all wonderful words that everybody can agree are great, right? That makes sounds well. The reality is though, reasonable, common sense, what does that actually mean? And, well, look, Scott, and, I, I, and I would also say, let, let me finish on that point though, because I think, again, I'm gonna say it, we have to see, you and I have to see clarity in all this emotion and to say it is a high burden for these constitutional rights that we have, whether it's speech, whether it's freedom of the press, whether it's you know gun rights as well. It's a very high burden that shouldn't be swayed just by political emotion. Let, Look, let me talk think, about that. Let me just say go for ahead, a second, though, because I think a lot of times opponents of making these reforms talk about political emotion. I mean, I'm sitting here. I'm just trying to do something as a, as a leader, as a representative in Congress of communities that want these reforms. Nine out of 10 Americans want background checks on guns. In fact, 69% of NRA you agree members with that. There already are background, background checks. checks. When you're a federally universal well, background, you're, background no, no, check, no, 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 no. Gun gun shows. When, you're, when you're a federally licensed, without loopholes, when you're so you a federally around. licensed arm dealer, if you had universal backgrounds, somebody, if they really wanted to, and you very well know this, would be able to get around. Scott, something. you can always. If they want to do harm, Scott, they can, can always do find an exception. But like we don't say that. Yeah, but just, these are the exceptions. We these mass we, shootings no, are no, exceptions. We don't. We don't say there are exceptions that are unique to America. That's not, they're because, not unique to America. Oh, oh they they're, they're, are. There, there is no. There are more of them in America. That's there true. There are far more of them. That's true. But and they why are do you more. think that they're is? Far, why do you think that unique. is? Let's stop there for a second. Why do you think that is? Why do you think there are far more mass so shootings? So let, let's let's talk about that. Some guy just in France killed 84 people. 
How many mass shootings has France had? How many mass shootings has France had in the last year? But that's not the point, Seth. The point is, it is no, not is the unique. Point. The point is, it, it is, is unique. Point. The point is, it's not unique to America. It's not unique to America. Yes, there are more. There, there's no question about that. I understand that. But the reality is, like I said, I'm, I'm not willing to impede on someone's rights because just because of emotional rhetoric. And other thing is, when you look at evidence-based studies, you mentioned studies, the things that are proposed, like the background checks, like the uh, assault ban, you know, I know that you, you were supporting that, they don't necessarily help reduce gun violence. Actually, background checks have been unequivocally shown to reduce but gun violence. But you already, if you're, about about mass mass they have it. if you're a federally what? licensed arm dealer, you have to have a background check anyway. But, I get a background Scott, check, you get a background Scott, check. Almost 50% of gun sales don't, do not happen through federally licensed uh, dealers. So, I mean, look, just How many of those were used in mass shootings? Do you think that... How many of those were used in mass shootings? Because this guy are, went through a background job. check. In Vegas, he oh, went listen, through background checks. We can checks. always find an example of yeah, where certain say mass that, shooting, you, shooting was But I'm looking for... Well, you you listen, mentioned one thing you said. We want to get things done. Nine out of You said we want to get things done. I want to get... I want to get things done, too. So let's look at... Nine out of ten Virginians. Nine out of ten people in That's not true. That is not true. Nine out of ten Americans want us to do this. Why are we so afraid to have a conversation? So I'm not afraid to have a conversation. I'm here having a conversation. I am not going, I'm not willing to impede on people's rights based upon your political desires. I'm just not. I want to go back and, and you watched this horrible event this week, just horrible, horrible sure. event. Is there anything you thought that we should do differently as a nation? That's a great question. So when you look at, let's look at this instance, you know, because we, you know, there's all, like I said, there's a lot of rhetoric out there. You got to do background checks and all these things. Well, this guy went through background checks. And there was no, his brother didn't know anything wrong with him. We didn't. Look, I'm still struggling with that profile as well, too. I don't understand. I think there's probably some other information that's going to come out. But the reality is, when you, when you look at some of the, the things that have been proposed on the other side are people who want gun control, none of them would have done anything about this issue. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do something. I'm saying when we look at gun violence in America and when you look at the populations that, that are more affected by it than other ones, I think there are some things that we can work together on doing. But simple, just, just saying we're going we're to gun control without confiscating them, because if you want to confiscate them, yeah, maybe we could do it then, but then you probably have civil war. How about fully automatic weapons? Should those be legal without okay, those restrictions? That's a great question. I watched the video and I listened to that rate of fire, and I'm sure that you did as well too, and you probably heard the same thing that I did. You, it was faster than semi-automatic. It was not as fast as fully automatic. It wasn't a sustained thing in fully automatic, but it was fast. The rate of fire was fast. And I hadn't even heard of bump stocks. And then I did some research on it. I think that that should be reevaluated. I think that they should look at that again and figure out if in fact it should meet the same burden of a fully automatic, because of course it is faster than semi-automatic. How do you draw the line? I mean, semi-automatic, you can fire pretty quickly and do a lot of damage too. Why do people need those weapons? I don't feel like a semi-automatic weapon rises to that level of an auto automatic weapon. I said, I do believe when you look at this bump stock and I think that ATF should reevaluate them. Martha, first of all, let me just say that, you know, Scott and I don't agree on all the details here. We both support the Second Amendment. Uh, sure. We obviously disagree on, on exactly uh, how gun reform should be carried out. But I respect the fact that you're willing to have the conversation. And this is the kind of conversation that we should be having. Democrats and Republicans across the aisle doing our job as representatives of Congress representing the people in America. And when the American people are saying we need to do something about these mass shootings, we should be having conversations like this. And I'm actually working on a bipartisan bill uh, that will uh, eliminate this bump stock exception and will try to address the other ways that you can get around this, this law. And look, the gun manufacturers were smart. They figured out a way to get around the law. It's the job of Congress to then step in and say that was not our intent. We did not want to provide this loophole in the law, so we should fix it. We've had conversations about the Fort Hood shooting. We've had conversations about Newtown. We've had conversations about the Navy Yard shooting over the years. Mm -hmm. Nothing has really changed. So, so why do you think this will resonate now? You know, I don't know how many innocent Americans need to die in mass shootings like this before we're willing to simply have these discussions. Uh, I'm sitting down with Republicans in the House of Representatives working on legislation because of this mass shooting. The sad thing is that if we don't get anything done this time, we all know there will be another one. And someday we'll have the courage to do something that's respectful of the Second Amendment, that respects the fact that uh, we're a society that people like to hunt and people have the right to own guns, but not weapons of war. We have ways that we can reduce this violence. We're not going to eliminate it. You're right, Scott. There's no silver bullet that's going to 
eliminate all of these things. I mean, look, uh, you, you live in Virginia. Uh, Virginia outlaws homicides and rapes, right? And that right. doesn't mean that people don't get around the law and still so figure out how to kill people. So I'm not going to pass a law going to stop so, that. Well, but you're also right? not going to repeal that law, right? And say that we shouldn't have any restrictions. I mean, there are common sense reforms. There are common sense laws that we can pass that are respectful of gun rights that still will reduce this public Man, health crisis in America. I hear reasonable, I hear common sense. That sounds great, sounds great. Uh, but at the same time, when, you, when like, what are they? What are they that actually, that actually backed by evidence, do something? And, and I, I have not seen that. And I know that you, you, you support the Second Amendment. We disagree on how much we both support sure. it or where it is. That's fine. Sure. You know, reasonable people can disagree, of course. But the Second Amendment is not just for hunting. And you know, you hear that a lot. Oh, it's for hunting. That's not for hunting. They, and, and, I, and I get how weapons have changed over time, but the Second Amendment was put in place to be able to th overthrow tyranny and with weapons of war at, at the time. Now, look, I, I don't disagree that, that people shouldn't have tanks and stuff like that, but let's, let's, not, let's not misunderstand history. I mean, that's, that's why it's there. So I think there are people who feel very, very strongly about that, very strongly. And same on your side as well, too. And look, and I, I, I applaud you for reaching across the aisle and trying to, trying to figure out ways that, that, that are reasonable, you know, um, that aren't what I've, what I've heard in some of the emotional, not you, but the emotional other folks with your party that have come out and said things that I don't find reasonable. I find they take people's rights away. Scott, with do no you think that no, restricting no. Um, these modifications like bump stocks and other things that turn semi-automatic weapons into automatic weapons that we've outlawed before, I mean, do you think that's reasonable? I, I think that you, I, I think, yes. Yeah, so you could create a law that says, okay, you can't, you can't modify your semi-automatic to automatic, which is already illegal, right? But you know, as well as I do, that it's not that hard to figure out, a, if you want to figure it out, and you're, you know, you, you, you're a little bit crafty, you can do it. You know that. And so I, if you just I, create I a law, you're already outside of the law if you're doing it. Well, I, I, I do, but the reality is that these bump stocks are available for sale. I mean, we don't know if this shooter had the skills had you ever heard to modify of him his... I, I had not heard of him before either. I hadn't either. But you know, there's a difference between being able to have to machine a part to make a weapon into an automatic weapon versus just buying something off the shelf. So where do we go from here? Where, where do you think we'll be a year from now? I hope that this conversation will continue. You know, it took some courage for Scott to show up here, um, especially as a Republican, because a lot of Republicans are not willing to have this conversation. And I'm willing to sit down as a Democrat and, and be reasonable. But these are the conversations that we should be having in Congress to protect the American people. And let's not say that just because people are emotional. I mean, my gosh, I'm kind of emotional. I mean, to see that many innocent Americans killed senselessly, of course that's emotional. But we've got to take action. We've got to do something. And I'm more than willing to sit down and have conversations to figure out how we, how we can help out. But the, the action that we take should be reasonable and common sense, of course. And it shouldn't unnecessarily infringe on people's constitutional rights. So I, I enjoyed the conversation and I look forward sure. to having a lot more. All right. And I enjoyed it as well. Our thanks to both congressmen for having that conversation.